As I ponder this time between Ash Wednesday and Easter, I think about how much Jesus gave up for me. And I'm realizing more and more that Jesus gave up his life not only to spare me from an eternity in hell, but also so I can be free. Not someday, but this day, here, now. It's this word free that he has laid on my heart to share about. Because you see, even after I accepted Jesus as my savior, I didn't live like I was free. I had heard scriptures like, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. But I sure had a lot of the old hanging around. I still had depression. I still had broken relationships. I still carried shame. I still felt unworthy. I was living a life in chains. Sometimes I wish that becoming a follower of Christ came with one of those easy buttons that we could just push and instantly we would live like God desires. While I know that positionally I am always right with God, it's the process of daily living where I struggle. And I think as Christians we don't always share about our struggles. There's this temptation to pretend that all is good and well because after all we have Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So why shouldn't it be? The problem is, is that we still live in a fallen and broken world, and we do sin, and we have struggles. These struggles are real. They hurt, they can sap us of our joy, and they can even make us question our faith and cause us to be angry at God. Maybe you are there now. I know I have been there before, and undoubtedly I will experience these pitfalls and valleys again. However, I want to share some good news. We can find freedom in the midst of the hardest moments. I'm not talking about someday looking back and seeing how God used a struggle or trial to grow you spiritually or to encourage someone else that has also experienced that struggle. That's good, but it comes down the road in life. Now I'm talking about pure, unadulterated freedom that is available for any moment, in the moment. Those moments when our flesh wants to sin, when temptations seem too strong, when our emotions are overwhelmed, or when we feel like we can't go on living another day. Jesus is available. Jesus is the balm your spirit needs, right when you need him. Don't doubt this. Jesus truly is a chain breaker. He sets the captives free. Strongholds are broken in his name. How do I know, you ask? Well, I've experienced it. Because you see, my story is this. I once was in bondage, but now I am free. And here's what I learned from a dear mentor of mine. Three words, reckon it so. The King James Version of the Bible is not my standard go-to, but this man always preached and taught his Sunday school lessons from it. And in this verse, it stuck with me for life, and I'd like to share it with you. It's helped me to choose freedom in the midst of dark times in difficult struggles, in the pit of hell that is depression. It has helped me when my flesh wants to sin, when I'm overcome with fear and anxiety. It's Romans 6, 11, and it says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive in God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We don't use the word reckon much anymore, but if you reckon that something is true, you think that is true. So I've learned to reckon it so, to believe that it's true, to say and believe with all of my heart, I am dead to the power of sin in my life and alive with God through Christ Jesus. And I try to live like I believe this. I do not do this of my own strength, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 10, three through five says, though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power and demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So you might be wondering, what does this look like practically speaking? For me, it comes down to choosing to use these weapons that Paul talks about and not my own methods. It means that when I have a lie in my thought, I check it with truth, with his word and what God says about me and the situation. I take these thoughts captive and I replace them with truth. When I have thoughts of unworthiness or thoughts that lead to fear and anxiety, I remind myself of his faithfulness and unending love. I pay attention to what I dwell on. Is it the lies or life-giving truth? 
What am I allowing myself to think about? Do I focus on His promises or my situation? Do I look for Him in the midst of it? Do I believe all of the amazing things that the Bible says about my God? Or do I put Him in a small box? In order to reckon it so, I have had to actively and intentionally seek Him. Unfortunately for me, there was no easy button and it didn't come naturally. Instead, it's been a slow process, but one that I am so grateful for. What it looks like for me is reading my Bible, carving out time to sit silently with Him, singing and praising Him in worship, listening to sound preaching and praying bold prayers as I pour out my heart to Him. All of these spiritual disciplines that I used to bristle at or be too busy for, they were suggestions I didn't want to hear about. They were not easy buttons. However, I'm here to tell you that for me, they've become my weapons of choice, my way of seeking truth and living in freedom, my ways of reckoning it so. When I get overwhelmed or face decisions or feel the old lies of unworthiness or anxious thoughts creeping in, I go to one of these practices and I behold God. I treasure Him. I turn on my playlist and I praise Him. I seek Him in that moment, even if it's in the middle of the night. And funny thing, He always finds me right where I am and knows what I need. Instead of pain, doubt, fear, anger, anxiety, my soul is fed with His love, His mercy, His grace, and in that very moment, I'm free. One of my favorite songs is Death Was Arrested. I can barely ever sing this song without crying. Mind you, I cry easily, but the lyrics remind me that thanks to Jesus, death was arrested and my life began. Forever I am free. All because of Jesus and His sacrifice on the cross and His resurrection. Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. But it isn't just a someday freedom. It's here. It's a now freedom that's available to everyone that puts their trust in Christ. You know, it's humbling to be desperate for God, but in life, we all treasure and adore something or someone. I'd like you to ask yourself, what do you treasure? I want to encourage you to treasure Christ and walk in the freedom that He gave His life to provide. As we approach Easter, I challenge you to pursue Him Find ways to intentionally and purposefully cherish and adore Him. What is so awesome is that He has a personal way to speak to you that will provide freedom. Seek Him. You will become better acquainted with His undying love for you. He will reveal the truth of who He is and who you are in Him. In John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus says, The thief comes to only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The enemy's tactics keep us focused on all that's wrong, blinded to our access to abundance. Because of Christ, we can have joy, peace, and freedom, even when everything around us is in chaos. Hold on to this truth from Scripture, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Jesus is here, everywhere. He is available. He offers life abundant. He offers freedom. Believe it, reckon it so. May God bless you and set you free.